Hello and welcome to the Furnace Core tutorial for Kronos. Kronos is Furnace Core's retimer. Kronos is designed to slow down or speed up footage. Kronos uses Local Motion Estimation or LME to perform the retime. It works by calculating the motion in the sequence using Local Motion Estimation in order to generate motion vectors. These motion vectors describe how each pixel moves from frame to frame. With accurate motion vectors, it is possible to generate an output image at any point in the timeline throughout the sequence by interpolating along the direction of the motion. This allows Kronos to generate new frames in between the original frames of 0 and 1. The new frames are created at quarter and three quarters in the timeline, instead of 0, an original frame, and 0 0.5 so as not to include any original frames in the retime sequence. This method avoids the pulsing effect that would otherwise be seen on every other frame on a half-speed slowdown, which occurs in other retimers. When Kronos is used to speed up motion, motion blur will be seen. Kronos also contains a number of controls to allow you to trade off render time versus accuracy of the vectors. This can be useful when time is a constraint. For more information on LME, please refer back to the Furnace Core introductory video. Before you start the tutorial, you should have downloaded the relevant scripts and image sequences from the Foundry website. Once you have done this, please open the Start Here script and we can begin. When you first open the Start Here script, you should find the image sequence with the canoeist and rolling through all the waves. And what we're going to attempt to do now is actually bring up a Kronos node and slow this down by half speed. So if you just press stop on the timeline, go to frame 1. And if you select the sequence and bring up the Kronos node, I'm going to be using the tab function over here to bring up the node. And you can bring up the node whichever way you feel most comfortable. Now we brought the node up, we should move in just a little bit closer than the viewer so you can see the inputs that it has and see exactly what they do. Now when you actually load up the Kronos node you will see it has five actual inputs. The first input that we have is the source input. Now you have to make sure this is connected to the image sequence we wish to retime. We also have the matte input. Now we use this to separate between the foreground and the background. Now this can improve the motion estimation by reducing the dragging of the pixels that can occur between the foreground and the background objects. On the other side of the node we also have the background vectors and the foreground vectors which are hiding in the corner. Now if you have been supplied with the vector sequences for the foreground and the background, connect them up to these inputs respectively. Now this will save time processing, as Kronos will not have to perform the motion estimation during the rendering process. Now if you have no pre-calculated vectors, you can ignore these vector inputs and let Kronos generate the motion vectors on its own on the fly. Now we also have the motion source input. Now if supplied, the motion vectors can be calculated from the sequence and applied to the input sequence. Now this can be useful um, if your input sequence is very noisy or has too much noise interference with the actual motion estimation calculation. In this case you should supply a smooth version of the sequence here for this input which can actually help you with your renders and get good results. So now we've seen what the actual inputs do on the actual node itself. Let's have a look at the actual parameters of the node in the properties bin. Now, if we look at the actual properties bin, we can see we have a variety of parameters to control. The first one in this is the method. Now, this controls the actual calculation taking place. Now, by default, this is a two motion estimation, which is the full vector interpolation, which is used to create the in-between frames from the accurate motion vectors. Now, you can use this, which is very time consuming, and the actual full calculation taking place. Or you can use the frame blending method. Now this is a mix between the actual two frames to create an in-between frame. Now this is quick to render and useful when tweaking the actual timing of your retime for the actual sequence before you go for the full method calculation for motion estimation. By default let's just leave this to motion estimation. We also have the timing. 
Now this is set to speed by default, but you can choose to retime the section by actual frames. But for this tutorial we're going to be using the speed setting to retime the actual sequence. Now because we're using the actual speed retiming and not the frames, the speed parameter is highlighted for us. Now by default this is set to a slowdown of 0 0.5, so this is a half speed retime for the original sequence. Now let's all leave the other parameters at their default settings and we should get a render of this just by showing the actual retiming of this just by 0 0.5 and changing no other parameters. So write this sequence out and we can see the results. So if we look at the actual render now, we can see that just by using the default settings of Chronos, we've actually achieved a half speed slowdown. However, if you look carefully at the actual footage, you can see that the actual canoe paddle has got some flux on there. The pixels are fluxing and there are some artifacts occurring where the frames haven't actually blended together properly and the vector detail is off. The way to fix this is that we have to actually apply a mat to the sequence and so we can differentiate between the actual foreground and the background. So in this case the foreground will be the paddle and the background will be everything else. We can fix this problem in part 2 of the Kronos tutorial.